Hey guys, Rio here, and welcome back to another hashtag daily tut, daily tutorial here on Tiga Designs, the show where I sort of, uh, sort of show you guys the effects, techniques, and methods I use to make my life a ton simpler when creating motion graphics in Adobe After Effects. Now today I'm going to be going over effect presets and why they're extremely, extremely underrated and why you should be using them. A lot of people think that effect presets are just, um, you know, a way of saving like, uh, you know, uh, no, ooh, that's a, that's a bad word. Uh, um, so, you know, I uh, just got some text here. And let's say I want to make a shadow. So I'm going to do uh, drop shadow over here in my effects and presets panel. I'm going to drag on, drag on a drop shadow. And that's what normal people use effect presets for. They'll change their shadow to how they like it. That looks pretty cool. I'm going to bring this down to like 18 for a nice little 2D drop shadow. Um... You can't see it when I make the background black, but uh, there you go. That's a drop shadow. This uh, font is American Captain right here. If you want to go and search that, I know someone's going to ask, so I'm just going to preemptively tell you guys what the <laughs> name of the font is. Um, so what people do is say, oh, I like this drop shadow. I'm going to name it something. I pressed enter on it to rename it, by the way. I'm going to name it uh, 2D uh, Drop Shadow of Epicness. And then they'll drag it over here to the effects and presets panel and drop it on this new page icon and they'll name it something like tutorial and i've already got one named tutorial so i'll replace it yes and now they can delete this layer say they're working on a new project a new uh new project for someone else and uh they make them some text and they drag it to the center and they're like oh that's some good text i remember that 2d drop shadow i did um which i named uh tutorial <laughs> very undescriptive and they'll say oh I want to drag it on and boom 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 that's our shadow and it's it's the same way I made it in the other project that's cool and that's how many people use it however you can do so much more ladies and gentlemen check this out I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your blow your minds right now uh, so uh, a few tutorials back I created a uh, a radial step sweep is what I called it uh, inspired by uh, Shark FX, and it was basically this. Keep in mind, keep in mind, I didn't do anything. I just double clicked a preset, and there it is. And all these parameters are editable. I'm gonna make that last one white. Uh, I'm gonna make that one whatever the hell that is. Uh, <laughs> make this one blue. And keep in mind, I did nothing. I just double clicked the effect preset that I saved and all this is editable. I can change the timing by adding two markers. So I added two markers right there. That's the duration. So changing this changes uh, how fast or how slow this happens. It's, this is, this is how powerful effect presets can be. Um, so I'm not going to go into that. That took like a lot of expressions. I, if you guys really bug me, I'll go into something this advanced, but I'll show you the basics of how that works. And you guys can extrapolate by watching my radial step sweep to troll and create this yourselves. It's not that hard once you know, um, how it works. So I'm going to do a quick demo, um, of doing more advanced presets here. So as you can see, I have uh, in this, in this, uh, whatever you want to call it, in this composition, sorry, I blanked. Um, I just have a simple circle shape layer, which I use the ellipse tool to create. Um, and I've animated its size to come up and then down at the same time that the position is moving off to the right. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, but what I want to do with this circle is create, oops, sorry, I just burped. Um, I'm gonna create like a burst. And uh, as you guys know, you can do that very easily with a repeater, but um, repeaters are a pain to set up e each and every time. So I've created a shape repeater effector. And all I did was double click on that preset with our layer selected, or you can drag it onto your layer. It doesn't really matter. And uh, there we go. It's all done. And I think one of the coolest parts is that uh, presets save expressions. So an expression that I made to evenly space all the new copies totally works. And as you can see, when I change this, the, all the circles evenly space around 
uh, using the repeater. And using this, you can just literally make a solid line if you want to go all the way up <laughs> with the repeater copies, um, which is not the way you should be making a, a radial burst like this, but I, I'm just showing you <laughs> um, that it can be done like that. And you can go all the way down to zero. So it's uh, really effective like that. And I'll show you how to do this from start to end. So I'm gonna delete the repeater that I dropped in and now we're just back to the regular old circle going out and in, uh, which I trust you guys will understand how to do. I literally just keyframed this <laughs> and this. Five keyframes. I think you guys can figure it out even if you don't know. You can just <laughs> mess around with five keyframes until you get it right. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and clean up our workspace here. And as you can see, we just have our ellipse, which is this circle right here. If I hide it and not hide it, that's just our circle. And I want to add a repeater to this circle. Uh, make sure to put it underneath, otherwise it won't, um, because repeaters uh, work on everything that's above it. So put a repeater here. I'm gonna name this radial repeater. And I renamed it by pressing enter with it selected. And I will now allow you to rename it. And as you can see here, we can change the number of copies, but uh, by default, repeaters copy 100 pixels off to the right, which is kind of annoying. Uh, and I can create a preset to add a repeater that just does nothing, so I don't have to go and set the... Because I, like, whenever I add a repeater, I always <laughs> set the position back to zero. So I might just make a preset that just adds a repeater that does no transforms off the bat, so I don't have to go over here and type in zero. Because <laughs> I always have to do that. It's annoying. Um, so go ahead and change your position offset to zero because we don't want to repeat off to the right. We want to repeat it in a circle. So as you can see, um, that's what the rotation does. So that's pretty cool. We could just set it manually and go, okay, so that looks about right and we're done. We could save the preset right here, but uh, it's not dynamic, meaning that we, when we add more copies, it just keeps adding more copies, which that's kind of a cool effect, but not really what we're going for. Um, we want it to be evenly spaced. So let's uh, think about this for a second. The rotation, in order for it to be evenly spaced, is going to be, um, let's just do an example. So I have four copies and I want to evenly space them across 360 degrees, which is a full circle. So I'll do 360 divided by four, which is 90 degrees. And as you can see, they're evenly spaced. If I did eight copies and I wanted to evenly space them, I would do 45, because 360 divided by eight is 45 and so on and so forth. So uh, we could sit here and do math all day or we can make After Effects do the math for us. So I'm gonna right click on the rotation stopwatch right here to bring up the expression parameter. And I'm going to say, uh, I want this rotation to be the value of this, uh, this code. So uh, we're gonna set up code to assign value to the rotation. So basically all this is is 360 divided by the number of copies. Oh, I forgot to put the division. <laughs> Got to put division in, guys. So slash, so 360 uh, slash content radial repeater dot copies, which is this, this parameter right here. And we click enter on our number pad, or you can just click out. If you hit the regular enter on your keyboard, it will just add a new line break. So you either want to click out or press uh, enter on your number pad. And as you can see, when we change our copies now, it automatically spaces them. And there's one last trick up the sleeve here, um, because if you go down to zero, it's gonna try to divide by zero and it's gonna throw us an error, um, which is not what we want. See, it's trying to do 360 divided by this, which is this, which is zero. So it's gonna throw us an error because it can't divide by zero. That's just one of the fundamental, uh, fundamental laws of math. <laughs> um, so we're gonna give it uh, something to do if it tries to divide by zero and throws an error. So we're going to be using the try statement. So I'm going to zoom in here. And what we're going to say is uh, try this little bit of code right here. We're going to try this. Now we need to close. And if it catches an error, so it's going to first try this stuff. And since it's divided by zero, it can't do it. It's going to fall back to catching an error. Uh, which would be um, just a rotation of zero. We want the rotation to just fall back to zero if it can't do it. So it's gonna say, hey, I'm reading this expression. Let's uh, try to divide uh, 360 by our number of copies to evenly space it. And if it goes, oops, we can't do that. That is a math error. It's gonna fall back to what we have between these two braces right here, 
which is just literally assigning rotation to a static number of zero. And if we go ahead and click enter or click out right there, um, you'll see that uh, when we have a copy set to zero, it no longer errors and um, we're good. So that is creating the effect. And now saving it's just as simple as clicking on this, dragging it over to the new preset and naming it. So tutorial.ffx, I already have one, so it's gonna replace it. And boom, there we go, we have it saved. Now we can delete this and go back to our effects and presets and assign our new preset. And there we go, that simple. That's all you have to do to make a radial repeater ever again. And uh, it's just that simple. And if I want to create a repeater that didn't offset 100 to the right, like I was talking about earlier, you just add a new repeater, um, literally get rid of this hell spell of a <laughs> default position offset, which literally pisses me off. I, you guys are witnessing my full wrath right here. That's, I hate that. And I'm just gonna name this something like, uh, <laughs> um, cut <laughs> clean repeater. Like literally, I don't know what else to call it. And then I'm just going to make a new thing called repeater. And then this way, whenever, <laughs> whenever I want to repeat something and I don't want to have to drill down into the uh, thing. Oh, that's my radial repeater. Sorry. I'm just going to search up repeater and drag it on and I'll get a repeater without having to set the darn position offset back, which is fantastic when you think about it. Um, so that's that. Uh, and you can do this with anything. You can say you had a layer style that you really liked. Um, so I say I put like a red stroke on this and I was like, well, it's a really cool red stroke. Um, I want to create this in effect preset. Just literally go here, or you can click on the stroke itself. But if you want to save all the layer styles, say you had like a gradient overlay and a few other things down below, like a drop shadow too, um, you could just drag, ooh, you actually can't drag the layer styles. You have to drag individual things. So you can just drag this stroke, wait a second. Can I not do that? I thought I could do this. Well, you guys are seeing it here first. I'm failing at a tutorial again. I thought you could, wow, okay. Never mind. Uh, completely omit the past minute from your memory. That's embarrassing. Um, but you can do it with effects. So this is just an example. Sliders are just dummy controls that you can use expressions on. Um, but say you like the slider, you can actually select multiple things. So I'm gonna select this slider and I'm also gonna select this ellipse and I'm gonna drag it onto here. And I'm gonna name it tutorial because I don't need the last one that we made. And uh, now, so we can even delete this whole layer. So let's uh, search up tutorial. And when I double click tutorial, it's gonna add our shape layer with the uh, with the lips in it, mind you, and all the lips animation. That's pretty cool. Starting, um, so I applied the preset with my playhead right here. So the animation, the keyframes start here, which is why they're like that. Um, so as you can see, it's the same animation that I had on the layer previous and the same ellipse, same path, same everything. And even the slider control got put on. So you can see you can really do a lot more um, and it saves expressions so you can just really go crazy as per uh, this thing that I created. Oh, it went away, so I'll just, I'll just add it again. As per this thing. <laughs> so that's like uh, the start and end of what you can do in in um, user presets in Adobe After Effects. This is the most, probably one of the more advanced examples, and you can just go down to something as simple as adding text with shadow. So that is a kind of a, a detailed look at everything you do with effect presets and why you should be using them. Uh, if you enjoy this tutorial or you learned something new from it, uh, I would really appreciate you guys leaving a like on this video. It's the least you could do after, you know, I helped you guys. <laughs> Uh, out um, and if you feel that you have any friends that might benefit from learning the stuff I talked about in this tutorial go ahead and copy the link to this video and uh, send it to them over discord Skype text message Facebook Twitter whatever um, sharing is caring and I'm sure they'd love you long time for the for the ease of 
ease of use you'd give them from sharing this knowledge. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow for another hashtag daily tut. All right, guys, take it easy and uh, stay awesome. Peace.